Starting off today, there's a lot of work to do. Believe it or not, we've put this much time into this mod pack, almost seven days worth of playtime. Can you believe that? Seven actual days worth of playtime I have put into this mod pack. And we still have work to do. There's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, today, I'm going to be working on prepping myself for a live stream. So tomorrow, uh, or actually, sorry, the time of this video, uh, I should be live streaming. So as you're watching this, um, yeah, head over to, if you're done watching this video, head on over to twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. I will be live streaming over there and uh, we're going to be running some vaults, but today I want to prep up crystals for said vaults. Um, and so as you can see, I have some, uh, some Larimar and then we also have the Binia Uh, we're going to need all of this and I've made a couple of, uh, Paxels. I ended up getting a bunch of these Paxel charms, um, inside the vault, which is nice because I don't have to craft them. Right, crafting them is kind of a pain. Um, it just uses up so much of the Binia type. But we have five of them, so I might be able to make five of these today and hope, hope we can roll a fortune on one. Um, if we could roll a fortune, there is a chance that we could potentially get up to fortune eight. Of course, we're not gonna have that today as I don't have the skill points to put everything in there. Um, and nor do we have a ancient book that uh has that on there we have power looting we have another ancient book that has power on it i believe um and i think like smite or something this one is another looting yeah smite so we have a lot of cool stuff that we can potentially uh make and, and enchant but we're not going to get to that high high looting level but we could get an extra fortune level if we roll it on our paxel so anvil let's uh grab you i do have several of you and uh, let's just go ahead and try it out. I mean, right off the bat, that's another hammer. I mean, if anything, I'm gonna have tons of these laying around. Another auto smelt. So yeah, so what I have to do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, some of what I currently have. This is my fortune one. And I've just gotta lay these out. Uh, for right now, I'm probably gonna do like 32 of them. Uh, I still have like, I think another whole stack worth of both uh, that we've gotten from these vaults has been absolutely insane. But I do want to use up all five of my modifiers and just hope that we get something good. 32 of each, just breaking it all down. Oh, you gotta love that. Break all of this down. There we go. And uh, how much should we end up getting out of that? Wow, a stack and a half basically on both of them? A little less on the video type, which I'm kind of nice, uh, kind of nice that we got more of the uh, the Lyramire. Uh So there we go. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and make, uh, so I have three more. So we need six of those. And then we also need six more of these. My goodness, we're making a lot of these picks today. So there is three brand new ones right here ready to go these are basically junk and then uh, we need our upgrades oh man let's hope I, I i would say they're junk but they're they're not actually junk let's grab those i mean out of three of these i mean like i said the chance to get it is very very slim there's another auto smelt there's a fragile which lowers the durability by three thousand that's probably one of the worst things that you can get. And Rush provides a bonus plus one haste. That one's actually not super bad. But this one, this one's basically garbage. I mean, literally, this thing has like less than a thousand durability now. If that, it, it probably has less than that. Let's see. What's the actual durability of this thing? I can hit, uh, if you ever want to see that, F3H. We'll show it. Um, lowers the durability by 3,000. So, oh, so there's 3,000 durability because a normal one has 6,000. Oh my gosh, it cut it in half. So I know a lot of you guys hate that I'm breaking these, but you know what? This is all I have to work with. So I, I can't do it. It's not like I can magically make a, a higher tier fortune pick up here. So I got to live with what I got and it is already higher than fortune three. I mean, at least we're doing fortune five worth which is really nice because of course we're getting that fortune four that's on here plus the one extra for vein mining. So you gotta keep that in mind. At least we're not, you know, we're getting fortune five, which is pretty good. 
All right, so after 32 more, as you can see, we got, you know, the same results. And the reason I'm mining all these up is because we need to make vault catalysts. And this is honestly probably the best use for spinning our Biniatite and our Larimar. So let's go and uh, get our vault crystals made up. So I'm going to make as many of these as I can. As you can see right there, that's that's basically... I mean, I could make more. We're going to go through what we currently have at the moment. I want to get at least like 10 of these in here. Let's see. That was enough. That was 16 a piece. So yeah, we definitely have room for a few more. Do four more because that is the exact number we need to get 10 more in here. And I mean, this is going to be the meta moving forward, I believe. Like this is what we have to do constantly moving forward. So I do have five more gems at the moment. These two gems already have been, uh, have already had this applied to them. Um, but what we're gonna see is we can actually apply more things to this. So this has luck, difficult, and uh, hunger on it. I could literally put gilding on here as well. So pretty nice. Um, what does destructive do? So there's a lot of modifiers on here that I don't know. I wish it showed. Destructive, 200% durability damage. Ooh. So when we get things like this, so we're, we're already gonna see this has destructive on it. I think these have optimistic and these are already like predefined and they don't roll. So these you probably wanna put on something if it's pretty nice. Like optimistic just extends time and you really don't want unlucky. Um, so this might end up being something that we re-roll. And then uh, right here, we've gilded and fatiguing. I, Probably will take the gilded because the fatiguing is not a big, big deal. Um, this has a positive and negative modifier. So the good thing about this is this will change depending on the crystal we put in it. So right here, this one gives us Odyssey. And I don't know if you remember, uh, I think Odyssey gives us a 50% chance. Is it 50%? Yeah, 50% plus artifact chance. So if you complete the objective, you're basically looking at you know, the potential for another artifact to be inside of your uh, your chest. So that's right there. That's already a pretty, pretty decent one, but it does come with Furious, which is pretty rough. That's a pretty rough roll. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to look through all these. Now, I think I did see this one's difficult and this one's destructive. These are two that are basically useless to me. There's no need for me to add these to anything. They don't, they're not gonna, they're basically already wasted anyways. So what you can do is we can go ahead and craft ourselves um, some Alexandriite. And then I'm gonna craft this with these two and it will give me one in return, but it'll be a reroll. So as you can see, we get a random positive modifier now on this and it's trapped. Um, so on this crystal, it's given us Phoenix. So you basically, I can just kind of go through over and over and figure out what's probably the best strategy for, uh, for what I wanna put on certain things. So I think this right here is a good example of something that could be worth it. We have Lucky already with and Gilded, and then we have Fatiguing, and then uh, Difficult on here. Not too bad. So I'm gonna take this with the Fatiguing. Um, that's a pretty nasty thing, but I think we can overcome it. I'm gonna show you why. Uh, and that is because I think I'm gonna go ahead and spec into this Immune. So if we were to get that effect, we'll be able to be cleansed for 20 seconds and we will not be able to get that effect reapplied to us for 20 seconds. Um, and the cooldown is 30 seconds. So uh, I don't know if the cooldown starts immediately after you hit it, which I hope it does, meaning we'll only have a 10 second cooldown before we can activate it again after the full effect is over. I think this is a pretty decent thing to spec into and I'm gonna go ahead and take that specialization. I should have taken it a long time ago, but you know we haven't really encountered things like this where mobs really start to, to hurt us. But after I applied that, um, some, some of these things actually should re-roll. Um, so we should see new things, for example, on the positive here and the negative. This one's gonna be extended with poisonous and tired. Um, I don't think I really want extended on this, but I really would like something that is easy. This is easy and slowed. We really don't want slowed, but I would prefer it to knock it down and not be so hard. This one's simple and inert. We could do this, but inert is going to slow our mod. It's going to slow our cooldowns. And um, 
that could become an issue too. So I just made two more catalysts and this one actually is giving plentiful, which is really, really nice. And this is gonna have plentiful, but two negative modifiers. So we have to kind of figure out which one's the best. Crowded and hard, probably not the greatest. Daycare and difficult, probably not the greatest either. And then this is freezing. I'm not quite sure what the freezing will do. And it slows our time down. I mean, daycare might be good with difficult. Plentiful daycare and difficult. I think that might be a good role for this. And so we can actually save these if we really wanted to. Um, I'm gonna need some experience, but we could potentially lower that difficulty as well. So after rolling over and over and over again, I end up having plentiful, slowed, and resilient and trapped on this one with a plentiful here as well. We have our lucky and gilded with fatiguing on that one, and then a gilded with daycare. This one, I just rolled this, and it gives me a super lucky with difficult on it, which is actually not too bad at all. Um, and I mean, if that's just how it's going to be on its own, then even that one is honestly pretty great. But after rolling it, let's put it back in here, see what we can get. Uh, personal space, raging and tired sounds awful. Easy and vulnerable could actually make this easier. Does do vulnerable, which gives us a, it does a hundred percent resistance on that, which is pretty hundred percent uh, negative resistance, which is pretty, pretty gross actually. Um, it may not want to do that. Then we've journeyed tired. So I think this is just good on its own. Um, and at the moment, this is all of our crystals. So I think this would be great for a live stream. We're gonna have all of our crystals ready to go here. All of the ones that are ready to go. Now, the reason why I am placing stuff on here is because I don't wanna get a locked vault. A locked vault sounds incredibly scary at this point, especially with all of our bags and all of our great gear and stuff we have. And getting a locked vault would be just the most stressful thing ever, especially since the vaults are a lot larger now. So it's almost like it pushes you to start doing it this way because random rolls could potentially lead you into a vault, uh, a locked one. And I have had to go through a locked vault and believe me, it was stressful. So now that we have those set aside, I do wanna start working on a few little micro farms that we could probably get set up and uh, they are gonna provide us with uh, a lot of utility when we go to make more and more crystals because I mean, at the moment I've made 105 crystals, like we've done 100 vaults. It's I think time that we probably invest in into these things. Um, so I already have like a micro tree farm, which is perfectly fine. We have a, a sheep farm for wool, even though I haven't, I don't remember if I've seen wool pop up in this or not, uh, but I've seen sugarcane pop up in it often and cactus often enough that we need to make farms for these. So one of the things I would really like to make is a bucket, but not just any kind of bucket, an infinite water bucket. It is going to use a pog, but other than that, it's actually really cheap. Like a pog, honestly, that's nothing for an infinite water bucket. This thing is gonna be really, really cool. Now, um, I wanna make these into like little five by five farms. Um, and I think I can come up with a pretty interesting solution for these. Um, and I think I want to set them over here so we can do like a, a five by five, maybe for each one of the farms. Cactus kind of works in its own way. Um, and so we can start with cactus. Let's see, we can start here. One, two, three, four, five. So right here will be our starting point. Same here and here. Perfect. So how am I going to do this? Well, with cactus, uh, cactus is actually pretty easy because we should be able to just place it in here like this with sand, um, even for this piece. And then we will leave, actually, you know what? We'll start on the corners here. So we'll end up doing like little sand paths here. So it'll be like this. Uh, and then the cactus will grow and then we'll have a fence post that is gonna be like this. And so all we have to do is place our cactus down and then we need to shift near it and it will just immediately give us all of the resources. And I think we can probably put like a slab here so that way we can stand and this thing will be incredibly fast. 
Now, believe it or not, this could also be turned into an automatic farm. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to do that, but it could. Uh, and now our sugar cane, this one's a little bit different. This one's gonna require a hoe in order to work. And then you can use grass or sand. It doesn't matter if you have snad unlocked, that'd be the best thing to use. Um, but we need to move it away. One, two, three, four. Hopefully it lands like right here. Perfect. That This fits perfect in here. Now, to make this the most efficient, um, if we were to, let's say, have sand right here, um, you move out one, and then I would place sand here, move out one, and place sand here. Actually, the water would go here. So we would have water placed here. The infinite water is so cool. Um, and then let's go ahead and I'll put that block here. And then the same goes for this. We would like look and then go over one, go two down and then one over. And this would need to be where water needs to go. Same from this one. You could look here, go two over, and this is where water needs to go. And so this will end up making like sort of the most efficient ish like setup, um, cause right here we'll be, ca uh, we'll be, should be able to put sand just about everywhere. Let's see right here would be a place. Um, right here is not. So is, I think this is about as compact as it gets. And so we just need to replace this with sand. I think this will work. So sand right here, as you can see, we can actually plant it. Oh my gosh, you actually want to see something crazy? Sugar cane can be planted on rocky dirt. So we don't need any of this at all. We don't need water at all. This whole thing works with rocky dirt. This is going to make this incredibly efficient because every block space can thus be filled up. This stuff's powerful. Look at this. Oh yeah, this is, this changes everything. Cause so what we can do is just stand in the middle and uh, we just use our hoe and we will have all of this nice and fortune. That is a nice micro farm. And of course the next on the list of micro farms is of course the melon and of course pumpkin. And uh, all I have to do is just sort of stand here and with vein miner, I can use my ax with fortune or what have you fortune. Probably. I don't, I don't know if fortune's better. Um, but yeah, definitely silk touch on melons. Cause we want to grab these and we can always break them later. But yeah, super simple. Like just literally just farm it like this. And this is going to probably be some of the fastest farms. And look, we can really, really maximize the space cause we don't need water. Oh man. <laughs> Who would have known that, uh, this rocky dirt would have been so useful. So with all this, we're talking about micro farms and, uh, I'm kind of thinking about something a little bit insane. This might be crazy. I'm, I might be going insane, but I'm thinking about exploiting the turtles. That's right. Tortoises, the ones from cork, the ones that have the oars on their back, believe it or not, they are automatable. And I think we could set this up to a hundred percent be automated. So the only thing you need is a turtle to be within the vicinity of this rod and you need the turtle to be, well, penetrated with the rod and uh, that said items will drop and should be able to be picked up by the hopper, but we have to get them here. And how would we go about moving mobs? Well, there's a reason I chose waystones. So I'm going to use some of this glass that I think looks kind of cool. Um, but we're going to need a feeding trough and all kinds of stuff. So this is going to be sort of organized in a, a way that should work. Um, but right here we have the warp plate and this actually rests perfectly right here. Now, the thing that I need is this right here. Now this links to this warp plate. Um, so if I place this warp plate right here and I need to keep this one separate. So I'm going to actually put this in my bag. Um, and then if I put this in here, I can actually transfer from here to there, but I can't go back the other way. So as you can see, there's no access to the other warp plate. So that means anything that gets teleported here will get stuck right here. And because the turtles are like four blocks in size, 
they should be they should fit perfectly right here in the center um and to to make sure that that happens let's get some fence posts and uh, i believe if we put fence here this should almost guarantee that they stay in this place right here in the middle now i have the perfect place to get these guys we set this up during a live stream this is on our massive mushroom island and believe it or not, these guys spawn like it's nobody's business. Um, so right down here, all I gotta do is just travel down and tortoises are gonna spawn in the dark areas. Um, why does it need to be dark? I, it's just part of how it's coded at the moment um, for this particular version. I think uh, the other ones that they don't really need it, but it's super simple. Like if I put the plate here and then I put this in, it's already linked up, right? And so all I gotta do is easily push this tortoise and I should be able to push it right onto that warp plate and poof, it's there. And then we can get multiples in there. This is gonna be awesome. And wouldn't you, wouldn't you know it, while I'm down here looking for the tortoises, yeah, there's an enchanted golden apple. I will definitely take that. That is a notch apple. Thank you very much. Also, what is this used for? Banners, oh, the gluttony charm, that's right. Ah, interesting. So look at that farm right there. So right here we have a bunch of tortoises. They are all setting and uh, doing pretty good. So um, what I kind of want to do is I want to make sure that this all goes to the top. Just like that. Let's make sure this is placed in. I'm going to have to break into here and somehow squat down. Let's see, trap door. Let's do the whole trap door method. Because I need to get below here, and I need to break this without hitting them. And there we go. So they are nice and lowered, which is perfect. Um, and now they actually need something else in here, uh, believe it or not. Something to interact with. Um, I'm going to need to break this and this um, because I need to place a container right down there see like a chest or actually a barrel this this actually might be the good place for a diamond barrel is right here now on top of that barrel i'm gonna place a feeding trough because yes in order for this to work they need a feeding trough um and then i'll just make a slab for this And there we go. We have a slab down there so we can access the barrel and everything and all is good. Okay. And then let's go ahead and grab that. And then we have this. I think if we were to replace these after we've broken them, don't know exactly how the shards work with them if they're separated again. Okay, so they still work. I'm going to leave them there for now. Um, but what do these guys eat? They eat cactus. Uh, so all we got to do is fill this with some cactus. And these guys should be able to reach the cactus. And now we got to come up with the clever solution for the redstone down below. So I think the easiest solution to our redstone problem is literally just placing this here. Notice that went up and all of them have been harvested. And we should hopefully see the materials end up in here if not they must have landed directly below uh we did get coal uh but yeah we definitely need to set this timer a lot lower because they're gonna have to feed so let's do 600 seconds or 600 ticks i should hopefully be slow enough to allow them to eat all their food gather some of the cactus I don't know, this is, so to me, this is sort of like me testing out a theory of a farm. Uh, will this work if they're all in a single block space? That I don't know. Oh, and, and it, it's retracted currently. So why did it not pull back the rod? There it goes. I think the tick might be too fast. So as you can see, that one just grew. The rod does not need to be inside though. So we might have to change this. And I'm going to have to use, yeah, because the pulse is going to be too fast, I think. 
So repeater and some redstone and we should be good, I think. So this way I will uh, place this here and then we'll have to just get a repeater going into this. And that should be able to slow the uh, the rate down enough. There we go. Oh, and I noticed that ended up falling into the floor. Ooh, that could be a problem. And it also still managed to leave it. Set it to tw set it to twenty. I don't know why it's still leaving that. That piston should push this. You'd think that hopper would pick it up. Did it pick the rod up this time? It did. There we go. So we're delaying it enough now, I think. Yeah, but that, oh, the, the material got left there. You know what we could do is instead of the hoppers, I mean, the hoppers will still work. We might have to use some sort of item funnel here instead. So to have this nice and set up, you know, just about as perfect as possible, we'll set the vacuum module to up, and this is going to pull items that are above it. Uh, could potentially suck up items from over here, though. Um, as you can see, it's pulling the cactus even from all the way over here. That's kind of crazy, actually. Um, let's see. But that should be fine. I'm not super worried. It's all going to end up dumping into this barrel anyways. So uh, we'll end up having a cinder module. And then we need to tell it, hey, we're going to send it to the front. And that's because we're going to have this barrel here. And uh, that should now work. So long as we have enough cactus, I think we should be fine. Uh, yeah, the only problem, like I said, is the cactus. So let's grab all of this. Make sure it has enough cactus to eat. And they all should eat that cactus and grow like that. Hopefully all of them end up growing. And then I'm going to set the timer on this to 600, like I was trying earlier. We'll see if that works. We'll give it a few minutes. And then, of course, we have to do the same thing. Extend this all the way. Give it somewhere to set. And there we go. So that should work. And as you can see, we got iron nuggets out of that. Perfect. So kind of interesting. I don't know how effective this is in the long run, but I mean, it is a way of generating a few different types of resources like coal, iron nuggets, lapis and redstone. And these things do generate. And I decided to put more feeding troughs just to have more food storage. Set this to 600 ticks. And that seems to be the magic number. And it seems like it's working. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for them to pop up. But I wonder if these guys would work better. I, th I think they end up with like a minute timer after they've been harvested or something like that. It says on the wiki. But even then, this thing is working pretty nice. Or like a little experimental farm. I, I think it's pretty cool. You know, you just need a break from the vaults every now and then. And I think today was a great day to do that. And I got a lot of stuff done. I like all the mini farms, including the tortoise one. That's probably my favorite. That's, that's my favorite farm. But anyways, guys, of course, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that, of course, is going to go to Momo. Of course, there's like some emoji stuff going on, but Momo, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. You're absolutely amazing. And thank you for supporting the channel. And of course, guys, if you're interested in supporting the channel as well, uh, go to chosenarchitect.store. Link in the description if you're interested in some awesome merchandise. That'd be uh, definitely a way to support this channel. Also, clicking the subscribe button is another way. And of course, guys, I will see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.